I am Brother Stephen Elabo, welcoming you to the Life Bible Church, Charlottesville, United States, a place where the undiluted Word of God is being preached. You are about to listen to our general superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, as a comfort to share the mind of God with you and your family. I want you to be ready to pick up your pen and your paper and jot down important messages as they will do you good. God bless you and remain blessed. The song, the message we are listening to today is actually on the basis of the song that we have listened to. And that is actually the scripture. Because the word of the Lord says, Arise and shine, for thy light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. That you find in the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, as we read through from verses 1 through to 12. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through to 12. Arise and shine, and thy, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and the gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee. But the Lord shall arise upon thee. But the Lord shall arise upon thee. And his glory shall be seen upon thee in Jesus' name. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thy eyes round about and see. And they all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far. And thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together. And thy heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. And the dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all day from Sheba, shall come. They shall bring gold and incense. And they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Sida or Keda shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nabaioth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on my altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these that fly as a cloud? And as the doves to their windows, surely the owls shall wait for me, and the sheep of Tashish first, to bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of the Lord thy God, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. And their king shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smoke thee. But in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. The gates of blessing shall be open unto you. The gates of healing shall be open unto you. The gates of deliverance shall be open unto you. The gates of victory shall be open unto you. The gates of success shall be open unto you. They shall not be short day nor night in Jesus' name. By the power of the Lord, the, day, the gates of excellence shall not be short against you. And men, 
that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. This is the word of the Lord. It's not just a prophecy. When a man is speaking on behalf of God, the revealed will of God, the man is prophesying. But when God himself is speaking, the Lord is saying unto you what already has been fulfilled, what already has been settled, what already has been finalized. Arise and shine is an instruction, a commandment for the Lord. It is a command with a reason. It is a command with an end in sight. He says, arise. When he says, arise, you are arising for a purpose. You are arising to glow. You are arising to shine. You are arising for the glory of the Lord. When you are asked to arise, it means you get up. It means you stand up on your feet. It means you get out of bed. And no matter how low you have been, no matter what has kept you sitting, no matter what has kept you sleeping, no matter what has kept you inactive, the power of the Lord is upon you. The Lord is saying by the power of his spirit, arise and you will arise. To arise is an order to somebody who was sleep, sleeping or sitting down. It is an order of hope to those that are hopeless. It is an assurance of light at the end of the tunnel. It is a revelation of divine intervention in human situation, which until that command, that revelation is unknown unto man. Arise and shine. For thy light has come. It means the individual being told to rise has been so long in darkness to the point that now that the light has come, the person does not even realize it. And the word of the Lord is saying that this is not just a mere light. He's saying the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And the Lord is saying to somebody that no matter what you have been through from January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, even this November that is almost ending, that there is a turning point for you. The Lord is saying that there is a new horizon coming your way. Arise and shine. You have been feeling downcast. The Lord is saying arise. You have been through the crisis and the challenges of the rest of the days of your life. The Lord is saying arise. A repentant sinner or backslider may not be aware of the forgiveness of God upon his or her life until the appointed time of restoration. Because, yes, you strayed away from the Lord. And then you cried unto the Lord, and the Lord have mercy upon you, and the Lord said, I have heard you. But because you still have to go through some things, you don't know that you are already forgiven, that you are already received, that you are already restored. And the Lord is saying, there is hope for you in Jesus' name. The disobedient and rebellious, re rebellious nation of Israel was unaware of divine pardon and restoration after their repentance until God himself came and gave this command, arise and shine. Before this time, Israel had gone astray, gone away, gone into wardom, gone into idolatry, gone into ungodliness and all kinds of evil, and God punished them. I will talk about that later on. But no matter what kind of punishment you're going through, no matter what kind of affliction or 
torment you are going through, understand. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, and this is God speaking, for I know the thought that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thought of peace and not of evil to give you what? An expected end. When a father is correcting a child, either by the word of the mouth, either by the frowning of the face, or by the use of a cane to spank the child. The father is doing it because of the love for the child. The father is doing it because of the future of the child. The father is doing it because of the great expectation for that very child. So that, child, you don't mess up your life before your appointed time. So that you don't miss the opportunity that God has made available unto you. So the father corrected. It is the will of God for all his children to rise up. To mount up with wings as eagles to a greater height of their life, to a greater height of their endeavor, so they can fulfill their purpose for living in the land of the living in Jesus' name. You know, God called Abraham, and Abraham responded to the voice of the Lord, and Abraham pronounced blessings upon, I mean, and God pronounced blessings upon Abraham. Again and again and again, I will get there later on and unveil to us that if you are a covenant child, a covenant child, and whether you are 80 years old, 90 years old, or 9 years old, if you are a child of God, you are a child in the hand of your father. And no matter what happens, if you stray away, your father will deal with you. But if you will return back unto the father, that covenant is still there waiting for you. While you were there with the father, the covenant was there. While you stray away, you are the one that strayed away from the covenant. The covenant is still waiting for you. And when you come back, you come and inherit the covenant again. And the Lord is saying, Unto you, that in blessing, I will bless you. Genesis chapter 22, verse 17, says that. And it says, in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. If I were you, I will note that and mark that and underline that and shade that and highlight that in my Bible. That not just that you will be blessed, but that your descendants will be blessed. And not just that you'll be blessed, but that the gates of your enemies you will possess in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 12 says, You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. You didn't get it. You will go out in joy. That means sorrow and sadness is all over. Crisis and confusion are all over. It says you will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Your time and hour of rejoicing has come in Jesus' name. Remember not the former things, not the things of old. It's a new day. It's a new day. In Acts of the Apostle. Chapter 3. The Bible talked about a certain lame man that had been lamed from his mother's womb. Please pay attention here. The man was lamed not because he had an accident. The man was lamed not because of anything happening, but right from the mother's womb. It was a foundational problem. 
the problem took place before he was even born. And the Bible says, if you are there, the man was carried. Was carried. Maybe the situation, the challenges, the problems, the wind of life, the affliction of life, the oppression of life, the sin of life has been carrying you from one place to the other and your life has been restless and peaceless. The Bible says, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called, what's the name? The man was daily being brought to the gates of a temple called Beautiful. And the people coming to the temple were coming to enjoy beautiful things. But as for this man, as close as he was to the temple, and as beautiful as the gate was, what did the Bible say the man was there doing? To ask for arms of them that entered into the temple. If the people going into the temple were able to dip their hands in the pocket and give unto the man, that means they have something, they have been blessed. But this man, last year he was there begging. January through December. And this year, all of January, he never missed it. He knew the time of worship. He knew the time of service. He knew the time of prayer. He was always there. But he was never blessed. He was never blessed. Maybe you are like that. You heard of the name of the Lord. You heard of the power of the Lord. You heard of the, of, of the blood of Jesus. And then you came like other people, and you came around, and you shook hands with people, but your life has always been miserable. Hear the word of the Lord. Arise and shine. A change is coming your life. A change is coming your way. You know, something is unique about this man. You know, the man could have gone to other places of gathering, he chose to come to the place of worship. That, yes, I know I'm a beggar. I know I'm paralyzed. Maybe your paralysis is spiritual. Maybe, maybe your paralysis is physical. Maybe your paralysis is financial. Maybe your paralysis is matrimonial. Maybe your paralysis is academic. Maybe your paralysis in the area of your head. What sort of kind of paralysis you may have? Mental paralysis, psychological paralysis, side paralysis. What sort of the kind of paralysis, you choose to come to the place of God. The God of this place will meet with you. And on this glorious day, the day of appointment, the day of appointment, and who knows, if today is your day, who knows, who knows, who knows, who knows, the day of your deliverance. The day of your release. And on this particular day, the man came as at other time. He's been coming and joined the music. He's been coming and enjoying the preaching. On this particular day, he came expecting as at other time. But it was an appointed day for him. And as Peter and John were coming, they got to him. And as at all the time, definitely Peter must have been given money before. John must have been given money before. Maybe you are here. People have been helping you before. It is time for the table of your life to be turned around. Instead of you receiving from people, it is time that by the power of the living God, you, be, you become a giver in Jesus' name. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. For the light is come. For the light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. 
And Peter, on this glorious day, he said, in the past I have money to give, whatever the currency is, but today, 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 he said I'm giving, not what I can give as a man, but what I have in the Lord. And I'm telling you, we have something in Christ Jesus. I said we have something in Christ Jesus. Uh, and then, as the man stretched forth his hand for arms, as at other time, God said, instead of you begging for arms, uh, you are getting an arm. And Peter looked unto him, and of course stretched his hand uh, and said, Today, silver and gold I have none. You know, I spoke earlier on about welfare. About welfare. And maybe you are there, you are sitting, you are saying, oh, thank God they do all this in this church. Thank God I can be a beneficiary of it. Hey, my prayer is not that you will be a beneficiary. And my prayer is that you will be a blessing in Jesus' name. The only reason why we ask you to give is that God will look at your faithfulness. God will look at your sacrifice and then turn your situation around. You have been given out of your lack and your want. And God will say, this individual deserves to be blessed. Deserves to be blessed. And uh, Peter said, silver and gold I have not. But such as I have, I give unto you in the name of Jesus. Rise up. Arise and shine. For thy light is come. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The paralyzed man did not know that his light has come. The paralyzed man did not realize that the glory of God is upon him. The paralyzed man did not know that his healing has taken place, that his deliverance has taken place. The paralyzed man did not know. Maybe you are seated in the congregation. The Lord has answered you already. And you are still crying like somebody that is unanswered. And Paul or Peter, realizing the ignorance of the man, because the Bible says, number one, your light already has come. Number two, the glory of God has risen upon you, but the people are still sitting down there. And so he had to come and say, Arise! Arise, and as you are rising up, you are shining in Jesus' name. You have been sitting down. You gave your life to Christ Jesus. You are born again. Forget about what happened in the past. God has forgiven. And now that you are here, and the Lord is saying, you can be a blessing. You can shine. You can glow. And the devil is saying, no, you cannot. You cannot. You cannot. I speak into your life. You will in Jesus' name. I look at three points very quickly. Prelude to divine proclamation. Prelude to divine proclamation. Point number two. Pathway to divine privileges. Pathway to divine privileges. And point number three. Power for dominant possession. Power for dominant possession. What is a prelude? Understand that the children of Israel was in a pitiable situation. And many of prophet Isaiah's prophecies concerning Israel before now have been that of woe. They've been that of wrath, of judgment, and of divine punishment that will come upon the people because of their disobedience to the laws and the commandments of the law. That was the prelude. They were in trouble because of their sin, because of their rebellion, because of their, uh, of, of their disobedience, because of their self-will, because of idolatry, because of pride, because of Adam. Look at Isaiah chapter 5. If you look at it from verses 1, 2 to 30, I hope time will permit us to read everything. Let's, let's take a quick journey there. Isaiah chapter 5. We'll look at it from verse 1 and see the kind of situation that they were in and the woes that were coming upon them. He says, Now will I sing to my well beloved, the song of my beloved 
touching his vineyard. My well beloved had a vineyard in a very beautiful hill. Stop right there. What is God calling these people? My beloved. That means they are God's people. You are a child of God. Amen? But if you go wrong, your heavenly father will discipline you. He said they're my beloved. Verse 2. And he fends it, the vineyard. He has his hedge over you. His protection over you. And he fends it and gather out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein. And it looked that it should bring forth grapes. And it brought forth what? Wine grapes. They became unprofitable. In spite of all the provisions of God, the protection of God, the power of God, the plan of God, the purpose of God, the presence of God, they, instead of grapes, they brought wild grapes. Verse 3, and now, things are beginning to change. O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, between me and my vineyard. What could have been done more? to my vineyard that I have not done in it. Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grace, it brought forth white grace. And now, go to, I will tell you what I'll do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof. I pray that the protection of God over our life will not be removed in Jesus' name. And it shall be eaten up. Hmm. When did divine protection, the hedge over us is taken away, that is when affliction, torment, sicknesses, diseases, oppression, lamentation begin to consume us. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. It says, and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. We shall not be trodden down. And I will lay it waste. And it shall not be pruned. It shall not be corrected. When you get to a point in your life that you cannot be corrected, Chastise. You're in a terrible situation. Not dig. But there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that there rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Judah, his pleasant plant, and in look for judgment, but behold, oppression for righteousness, but behold, a cry. Woe unto them that join house to house, that lay field to field, till there be no place, that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. In my ears sailed the Lord of hosts, of a truth, many houses shall be desolate. Even great and fear without inhabitants. That will not be our portion. Yea, ten acres of vineyard shall yield one boat, but, and the seed of an homer shall yield an ephah. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue until night, till wine inflame them, and the harp, and the vial, the chabrel, and pipe, and wine are in their feasts. But they regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the oppression of his hands. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. Because they have no knowledge and the honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he that rejoices shall descend into it. And the mean man shall be brought down and the mighty man shall be humbled and the eyes of the loftal shall be humbled. 
but the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment. And God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. Then shall the lambs feed after their manner, and the waste places of the fat ones shall strangers eat. Verse 18. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity, and sin as it were with a cart rope. That say, let him make speed and hasten his work, that we may see it. And let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw near and come, that we may know it. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness before light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and the prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward, and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoured the stubble, and the flame consumed the sharp, so their root shall be rottenness. And their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the Lord of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his, against his people, and he has stretched forth his sound against them, and has smitten them, and the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in, in the midst of the street. For all this his anger is not turned away. But his hand is stretched out still. And he will lift up an easing to the nations from far. And will hasten unto them from the end of the earth. And behold, they shall come with speed swiftly. None shall be weary nor stubble among them. None shall slumber nor sleep. Neither shall the girdle of their loins be loose, nor the lashes of their shoes be broken. Whose arrows are sharp, and all their bows bent, their horses, hoofs shall be counted like flint, and their wheels like a whirlwind. Their roaring shall be like a lion. They shall roar like young lions. Yea. They shall roar and lay hold of the prey and shall carry it away, say, and none shall deliver it. And in that day, they shall roar against them like the roaring of the sea. And if one look unto the land, behold, darkness and sorrow, and the light is darkness in the heavens thereof. That was the condition that Israel found herself before this time. And if you look at the book of Isaiah chapter 29 verse 4, the word of the Lord says, And thou shalt be brought down, and shalt speak out of the ground, and thy speech shall be low out of the dust, and thy voice shall be as the one that hath a familiar spirit. Out of the ground, and thy speech shall whisper out of the dust. The Lord so much dealt with them that God is saying that you will pay for your sin. In the midst of all this, God, the merciful God, see has plan of redemption for his people. God wants us to know that sin, self, and Satan will bring yokes and affliction upon mankind. But if we can run to Christ Jesus, there is hope for us. And this God of mercy, with a provision for our deliverance, has requested that we repent of our wrongdoings and hope in God. 
And that is why, after careful observation of genuine repentance from Israel, words of encouragement, words of hope came from the Lord in chapter 16. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. For the light is come. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 tells us, Come now and let us risen together, say the Lord. If you have seen, be as scarlet. It shall be as white as snow. That tells us that there can be a complete turnaround. That tells us that no matter how negative our past might have been, no matter how terrible our status may have been, God can make us to rise up again and shine. My question to you today is, is your spiritual life in shamble? Or your marriage in a mess? Are you financially bankrupt? Is there any challenge with your job? Any problem with your academic, your health, your children, your position or status? Are you falling? Are you dead and dry? Like the bones in the valley of dry bone? Are you confused or fearful? Are you feeling defeated or dejected? Thus says the word of the Lord. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Understand with God all things are possible. The Lord is saying to somebody here today, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, and you will know it. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. That was the prelude to Isaiah chapter 60. Second point, the pathway to divine privileges. The provisions of God are there for all. The protections of God are there for us. The purpose, the plan of God are there for us. The privileges are there for us. What then do you do? Proverbs chapter 4, verses 25 to 27 says, Let thy eyes look right on. Be focused. Be focused on why you came to church. Be focused on why you came to the Lord. Be, be focused on why you came for prayer. Be focused on where you are in the Bible. Let thy eyes look straight on. And let thy eyelid look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet. And let all thy ways be established. Which way are you going? Are you still on the path of righteousness? Are you still on the path of holiness, purity, and uprightness? Ponder the path of thy feet. And let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand or to the left. Remove thy feet from evil. That is the pathway to divine privileges. Jesus said in John chapter 14 verse 6, He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody, no man, no woman, no old or young person, old or young, come unto the Father except by me, by me, by me. John chapter 11 verse 10 says, He that walks in the darkness will stumble. So walk in the light. If you want divine privileges accomplished in your life, you want to be a beneficiary of the grace of God, walk in the light. Walk in the will of God. No matter how bad, how terrible your past may have been, God has a better plan for your life. I told you earlier on, I know the thoughts I think towards you, the thought of peace and not of evil, to bring you an expected end. Hey, God has not given up on you. Don't give up on yourself. To hear God is a privilege. To see God move is an opportunity. To see God act is an honor. God wants to be honored in your life. God wants to move in your life. He's speaking unto you. That is why you are here. That is why the paralytic man was there at the beautiful gate. And by virtue of being there from time to time, he got to a point in his life that God met him at the point of his need. God wants to meet you at the point of your need. Release yourself unto him. Like a sick man, release himself to the physician to operate upon. 
Allow the Lord to operate on the heart, on your, on your heart, and take away the Adamic nature. Allow the grace of God to be manifest in your life. Allow the self in you to be crucified. Allow God to move in your life. Hebrews chapter 12, looking at it from verses 6 through to 12, says, For whom the Lord loveth is chastening. Is the Lord correcting you as a man, as a woman, as a child, as a worker in the church? For whom the Lord loveth is chastening and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. You know, if you're a bastard, you are not in the house. If you're a bastard, you are driven out of the house and you miss all the corrections. You miss all the instructions. You miss all the commandments because you don't belong to the house. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. Can you see there? You are being corrected. You are being scolded. You are being disciplined. And the Bible says you accept it. You endure it. You say to yourself, Lord, use this to turn me around. The Bible says that God deals with you as with a son. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? If you're a real son, if you're a real daughter, if you're a real child in the family, and you're not saying, who is that God? That is what Pharaoh said. What can he do? What that is what that is how Pharaoh acted. Remember Nebuchadnezzar? Who is that God that will deliver you from my hand? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers. Stop right there. If ye be without chastisement, we are of all our partakers. Please look up here. The word of God is taking, talking to us. The path to divine privileges. The word of the Lord is saying, if you're a true child in the family, at one point or the other, you will be corrected. You will be disciplined. We're not perfect. And the correction comes in different and diverse ways. If you're a rich child in the family, and you want to arise, you want to shine. You want the glory of the Lord to be made manifest in your life. The Bible, look at it. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye what? The Bible says then you are bastard. It is something, you know, some people cannot correct them. You cannot tell them, don't do this, don't do that. You cannot tell them, stop. You cannot say, go this way, go that way. They are higher than the highest. They are superior to the word of God. God is nobody in their life. The Bible says you don't belong. You are a bastard. You are a bastard. You are a bastard and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh. It says, forget about spiritual things. Let's come into the natural, the biological the physical. We have our earthly fathers. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them what? Reverence. Please pay attention. The Bible says your earthly father corrects you. You still honor your father. You still respect your father. You don't insult your father. You don't shut up your father. You don't shut down your father. You don't shut out your father. We still respect them. And sometimes our earthly parents may even be wrong. We still respect them. We don't say, who are you? We don't say, what have you begotten? And the Bible says, shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? That means, if you are not in subjection to the Father of spirits, you will not live. You may still be walking the street, but you are dead spiritually. You may still be having some money in the bank, but you are dead spiritually. You may still be having a name, and people say brother, sister, but you are dead spiritually. Your name already is taken out of the book of life. 
Lord will help us in Jesus' name. But God wants us to rise up and to shine. For they verily for a few days, that is our earthly father, for a few days, they chastened us after their own pleasure. Daddy felt this is the right thing. Do it. You don't do it that way. He disciplines you after his own pleasure. That is what daddy believes. That is what mommy believes. And if you're a child, you don't submit to that father, to that mother. Those are your earthly gods. Submit unto them. Those are the representatives of God on earth. And you don't submit unto them. The Bible says, if you don't do that, your days on earth will not be lengthened. This is the word of God. Let us submit unto it. It says, they do it after their pleasure. One day you become a father. One day you become a mother. One day you become a leader. And it may not be biological father. It may be your spiritual father. And your spiritual father says, this is how things should be done. If you do it right, the blessing of God is coming. If you do it contrary, your spiritual father may not say a word. And sometimes because they love you, they correct you. You know, it's actually better they correct you than they keep it quiet. Because when they correct you, it helps you to examine yourself and to make your wish right. If they keep quiet and, now, and allow God to deal with you, it will be, it will be intolerable for you. It says, where are we? It says, they did for their pleasure, but he, that is God, chastises us for what? For our profit. God corrects us for our own good. That we can become holy, pure, righteous, humble, submissive, uh, gentle, meek, lowly, honorable, successful in life. Successful in the ministry, successful in the marriage, and everything. God does that for our profit, that we might be partakers of what? His holiness. That's what will qualify us for heaven. That is the path to divine privilege. He says, now, no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous. It's painful, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness, Unto them which are exercised. The word exercised there means those that are trained, those that are pruned, those, those that are turned around. That all these corrections, all these disciplines makes us to come out a better person, a better worker, a better minister of the gospel. The Lord will make us so in Jesus' name. It says, Wherefore, wherefore you are there. Your hands are down. Your heads are down. Your soul is down. You say, no more hope for me. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. And the Lord is saying, if you are like that and you have been feeling, why are they correcting me? Why are they doing this to me? Why are they doing that to me? It's for your good. Don't you know and say it's for your good. And the Lord will perfect it in you in Jesus' name. First Peter chapter 1 verse 6 says, in all this, you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trial. I pray your suffering will not be in vain. Your labors will not be in vain. Deuteronomy chapter 28, you know the blessings that are there. It says, if you will diligently, diligently, uh, passionately and carefully and meticulously and honorably hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. Can you see it there? It says uh, that the Lord God thy God will set thee where? High above, arise and shine. That's the outcome of obedience, submission. The Lord will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Verse 2. And all these, in plural, all these, both the ones you are thinking about and the one God is thinking for you, 
both the ones you know and the ones you don't know. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall thou be in the city and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flock of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee Seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand upon to do. And he shall bless thee in the land, in the land, in this land which the Lord thy God giveth unto thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself. And he shall, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. Verse 10. And all the people of the earth, and all the members of the church, and all the people in the community, and all the people in the state, shall see and say that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. Somebody say amen. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, and in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. You see the covenant there. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. His heavenly treasure and the heaven to give thee rain unto thy land in his season and to bless all the work of your hand. That will be your portion in Jesus' name. First Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 says, If my people shall call by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Humble and pray. Humble and take correction. Humble and repent. Humble and seek the Lord. Humble and be sober. Humble and seek the Lord. And pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Don't say, Lord, I'm sorry today and tomorrow you are back to the sin. Don't say you are sorry today and tomorrow you say it doesn't matter. You turn away. You turn away. You turn away. The Bible says, whosoever that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whosoever that confess it and then forsake it, shall have mercy. Shall have mercy. Shall have mercy. You know, some people, they say they repent in one way, but in another way, they are committing another sin. They say they are sorry in one way, but they go behind and they are even doing terrible things. The Bible says, you turn from your wicked ways. He says, then will I hear, I'm back to First Chronicles, so then will I hear from heaven and will give and we forgive their sin and we heal their land. So then, what do we do? As the pathway to divine privileges, I have ten things. Number one, there must be genuine repentance and confession through godly sorrow. Read Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 19, as well as 2 Corinthians, chapter 7, verse 10. Number two, there must be gracious appreciation to God for the opportunity to be corrected. Number one, genuine repentance with godly sorrow. Number two, gracious appreciation unto God and to whosoever the vessel God is using. To correct you, to unveil. You know, some people, when their sins are uncovered, they are mad with whoever uncovered their sin. Instead of going to God and say, Lord, thank you for using this individual to bring me out, to search me out. 
gracious appreciation to God for the opportunity to be corrected. Number three, gallant humility under discipline. Gallant humility, courageous, bold humility. What that means is David did something wrong. God sent a prophet unto him. Initially, he denied. Eventually, he came to himself and he said, yes, I am the one. He didn't say this is just an ordinary prophet, one of the subjects in my kingdom. He submitted himself. Then he wrote Psalm 51. Have mercy upon me, O God. Have mercy upon me. And then he got into verse 5. He said, it was in sin that I was formed. And in iniquity, did my mother, in, in, in sin I was shipping and in sin, my mother gave birth unto me. He got into the 17th verse. He said, O oh God, thou desirest not sacrifice, else will I give it. The sacrifice of the Lord is a broken spirit. A broken spirit and a contrite heart, O oh God, thou will not despise. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 2 says, And unto this man will I look. He said, For all these things my hand has made, but unto this man will I look. The man that is contrite in spirit and tremble at my wall. Not the man that fakes it, act it, pretend. But the man that just say, Lord, have your way in my life. Those are the people that will rise and shine. And no matter what has happened to you in the past, if you are now humble before the Lord, the Lord will lift you up and even use you more than people that have not done what you have done. Arise and shine. If, you, if somebody is told to arise, it means the person was down. If somebody is told to arise and shine, it means the person was in darkness. If somebody is told to arise and shine, it means the person's situation was hopeless. And the Lord is saying, if you would just plunge yourself into the blood of forgiveness, the blood of the Lord Jesus, and humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, he, God himself, will lift you up. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Maybe you have not done anything wrong, but your life, will can't even, you are there, but we don't know you are there. And the Lord is speaking unto you, arise and shine. And the correction is coming your way right now. If you are born again, genuinely born again, if you are really serious with the Lord, you can be a blessing to your community and to other people. Check this correction gallantly and submit yourself. James chapter 4 verse 10 says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and then you... You are listening to our pastor, Pastor W. F. Kumoye, or other anointed minister of God, from our ministry. Let the words sink in your heart and they will do you good throughout your whole life. It is our belief by the grace of the Lord that you will come and worship with us at Deeper Life Bible Church, number 4656 Brywo Drive. We have our service every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 11.30 and we have our Bible study on every Monday from 7 to 8.30. As you are doing so, I, the grace of the Lord will continue to be with you and you will never be the same. Thank you. God bless you.